ETAP arc flash is designed to calculate the amount of incident energy that could be released in the event of an arc fault. Basically, an arc flash hazard uh, uh, can occur when a conductive object gets too close to a high amp current source, an energized conductor. An electrical arc is accompanied by a tremendous uh, temperature and release of heat, and the temperature can reach as uh, the temperature can be as high as 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and even vaporize metal. Uh, the, the tremendous temperature can uh, cause severe skin burns by direct heat exposure and by igniting clothing. Electrical arcs also have other side effects like impacts or blast, uh, which is the heating of air and the vaporization of metal, which creates a pressure wave that can damage hearing and cause memory loss from concussions and other injuries. The flying metal debris parts are also a hazard. Falls are also a side effect of electrical uh, arcs uh, and impacts since personnel can be working on scaffolding or ladders and fall from the impact. Prior to showing ETAP, I would like to define a few of the terms that we need to be familiar for uh, in order to be able to perform an arc flash study. Uh, one of the first terms is the bolted fault current which is defined as the short circuit contact between two conductors at different potentials in which the impedance between the conductors is zero. Basically, the bolted fault current is the short circuit calculation that can be performed using ETAP. One of them is a uh, three-phase fault analysis, and you can also perform unbalanced faults, but for the essence of the uh, IEEE 1584 calculation, uh, they recommend that we use a three-phase bolted fault current analysis. The next term that I would like to define is the available fault current, which is defined as the electrical current that can be provided by the serving utility and facility-owned electrical generating devices and large electrical motors, considering the amount of impedance in the current path. It is very important for, uh, for an engineer to determine what is the available amount of fault current at the utility service entrance and also to determine what is the minimum amount of current available it may turn out that the minimum amount of fault current could cause uh, a longer fault clearing time and therefore a, long, a much higher release of incident energy in the event of an arc fault. The next term that I would like to define is the arc in fault current, which is the current flowing through an electrical arc plasma, also called an arc fault current or arc in current. In ETAP, we use the term arc in current to represent the amount of current that flows in the event of an arc uh, and it is determined based on the available bolted fault current or the short circuit calculation that we perform. Also, we need to record and determine the system nominal voltage, uh, which is de designed, uh, which is used to calculate the incident energy. According to IEEE 1584 methodology, it is very important for us to determine what voltage level we're dealing with in the system in order to use the correct equations to calculate the arcing current and uh, eventually the incident energy released in the event of an arc. Also, a very important term to define is the working distance, which is the distance between the possible arc point and the head and body of the worker positioned in place to perform the task. It is very important that we find or define the closest distance at which the personnel can be to that arc location because the, higher, uh, the, the closer the person is to the arc location, uh, the, the, the higher the exposure to, or the danger will be uh, in the event of an arc. Also, we like to define the incident energy, which is the amount of energy impressed on a surface, a certain distance from the source, generated during an electrical arc event. ETAB will automatically determine the incident energy at different working distances or, are, or for a particular uh, tasks uh, with pre predetermined working distances. The flash protection boundary is the last uh, uh, definition for before we move on to our ETAP arc flash presentation. And basically, it is defined as the distance at which the incident energy equals 1.2 calories per centimeter square, which will be the onset of a second degree burn. Currently, we have two standards in ETAP that can be used to determine the amount of incident energy released in the event of an arc fault. The first one 
and the older one is the NFPA 7E 2004, which is the standard for electrical safety requirements for employee workplaces. The next one is the IEEE 1584 2002 and 2004A amendments, which are the guide for performing arc flash hazard calculations. Currently, uh, the majority of our arc flash users are, are performing analysis using the IEEE 1584 method because it has a broader range of calculation analysis. Uh, it has a, a, a more capable, a wider range of short uh, arcing current values and voltage levels that can be analyzed. Prior to uh, the, uh, performing an arc flash uh, analysis in ETAP, uh, there has to be some general steps that have, have, that have to be taken prior to performing the analysis. The, the, the one that is actually the, the, takes the majority of the work in an arc flash study is the collection and data entry of the system information required for the arc flash calculation. All this data collection uh, means that you have to collect all the data required to perform a short circuit calculation, all the data required for uh, a coordination and protection study, and also the, the, the parameters that are specific to the arc flash calculation. Also, we need to set up the system operating configurations, which means that we have to determine whether the system can operate with multiple sources or it's a single fed radial system. It can, if it can operate with type tie uh, PDs in close, which will be normally open, and also whether you have uh, multiple generators operating in, in parallel with, with power grids and, and commercial utility services. Once we have determined the operating configurations and we have entered all the data required to perform a short circuit study, uh, ETAP arc flash would determine the amount of arcing current flowing through all the different paths and uh, energizing sources to a particular location. And it will go ahead to determine the arc clearing time, which is the arc duration from the time current characteristics of the circuit. Once, once we have determined the full clearing time we will go ahead and determine the incident energy from the time and the amount of arcing current. And from then on, we would proceed to determine the flash protection boundary and, and the hazard risk categories according to NFPA 7E. Once the, uh, the program has provided the category, uh, you can define your, your selection of personal protective equipment and present that on reports and labels on the program. At this time, I would like to switch to, to ETAP and show you how everything works in the program and how you would perform the, the, the analysis for different systems. The first steps that I mentioned will be the data collection. You will have to start by entering all the information required to determine the short circuit calculations in the program. You would start with your available fault current at the power grid level, which is your utility represented by this, this symbol. If you go to the rating page of the utility, you'll be able to see that we have uh, the available full current uh, fields where you can enter that information, which are located in this area here. For this particular system, the available full current is 20,000 amps. Uh, at a voltage of 34.5 kV. Next, you need to determine the generator impedance and the different sources that can operate in parallel with this uh, utility source. The next important item will be the generator, and for this, you will have to define the different impedance values that are required to determine the short circuit contribution from this from this source. In ETAP, you have uh, available typical data, which you can easily uh, enter or populate your generator parameters in, in case you didn't have the actual data. Of course, to perform a, a meaningful arc flash analysis, you need to determine or get this information from the manufacturer of the generator in order to get accurate values. Also, you need to define uh, the type of equipment that you're dealing with, uh, as far as uh, whether you're dealing with switch gears, motor control centers, panel boards, and so on. Uh, the next item that you need to set up in, in ETAP before running an arc flash analysis